Hey, what is up, everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. I couldn't go live today. It was just one of those things. We didn't do Mother's Day last weekend, really, so we're going out today, so I'm not going to be around. But I, I did want to get a video up for you guys, and um, I'm going for it. So we're going to do Aaron Weisenfeld Team 7. If you noticed... Um, Earlier in the week, I posted a Grifter uh, video, and I'm actually going to try to go through quite a bit of Wildstorm's uh, catalog and just kind of check it all out. It's been a long time since I've looked at these books, and this was sort of the starting ground for me, and um, a lot of people are still huge fans of this. You know, there's, there's certain moments in comics that are just very, very iconic, and there was a flood of really great talent that came into comics at this time and this is before i broke in but i'll talk about my interest in aaron weisenfeld and uh his art how i discovered it and was blown away by it so anyway super fun sunday is always super fun and let's do it all right so this is the cover for team seven number one pencils by aaron weisenfeld and amazing amazing inks by trevor scott the key signature as you'll see it and and that's actually quite clever that he came up with that uh so when i don't remember seeing this book on the shelves uh what would you call it like like uh when the first issue came out now i may have picked it up i don't remember that but what i do remember is the first time i went to wildstorm and met with an editor and showed my samples he gave me um about 10 photocopies of different pencilers to try out on and to develop more Wildstorm style inking skills. It was quite brushy at the time and had more of a kind of slick, clean look uh, to my work and um, didn't really work much with the Hunt 102, to be quite honest. Um, I, I had a couple, but it wasn't a, a tool of choice. Anyway, in that stack, one or two pieces in particular melted my brain and of course they were by this guy i'll show the pieces when we come across them but i really had never seen art that was this intense and detailed and it was like just very very cool looking so uh yeah let's get into this and uh check it out it's gonna be really really fun um i actually was i was good friends with aaron weisenfeld we've lost touch over the years he's a fine artist now but i i have gone to his painting studio um maybe five or ten years ago um but he's still in san diego and uh he's still kicking ass so um we're gonna go in order so we can see if this, this is a wills portaccio um these were covers that will did a, a series of variant covers that all connected um, and uh, Alex Garner inked these, which actually is an interesting pair up with Wills. It's a little um, more Terry Austin at the time ish than uh, you know inks you might see on Wills, but uh, they did a really really great job. Alex had a fancy signature too. When I got to Wildstorm, I didn't have a signature. In fact, if if you ever see early work of mine, my signature changes for about a year and a half. Um, uh, with recommendations from people. My friend JJ Kirby turned it into a smile. Actually, I can show you what it was. Let me see if I can do it really fast. Sorry for sidebar. So this was this was a signature that JJ said. It goes like this. Friend. And it's a smile. <laughs> so believe it or not, you can actually find pieces that I did that that's my signature. How corny is that? embarrassing early mistakes that I made now anyway uh so like again Aaron Aaron took almost a year to do this first issue so we have to take that into consideration when we look at the level of detail and um you know the quantity of like line work and stuff he did this stuff was very very intense if I was gonna guess he probably spent like a week or so on each page um he had come out of Neil Adams continuity and had worked there for i don't know probably less than a year out in new york he went to art college so aaron went to a school called cooper union um and i don't know how many years he was there but uh he was still very young when i met him and we were both like uh probably 21 or 22 somewhere around there um and uh 
anyway, Aaron was light years beyond what I was um, at that point. So you figure if he graduated when he was 17 or maybe even graduated early and went to this Cooper Union, he could have gone there for a few years. This double page spread was crazy. I actually think that this was one of the things that I had. Um, you know what? They might have only given me half of it. I vaguely, vaguely remember inking this half as a sample one time. But yeah, this is just nuts. Look at this. These these scans are interesting. So this is DC obviously republished this maybe for Comixology. This looks pretty good. I was noticing on issue three, there was a little bit of Mori patterns ha happening. You'll see it when we get to it. But uh, this actually looks really, really good. And and I can't, I don't know. I didn't notice who colored this first issue, but uh, I like these colors a little tiny bit better than um, the stuff on the Grifter issue. So everybody was learning at that point. You know, I did a great video for Patreon um, earlier in the week about... Um, uh, early Wildstorm and and the frustrations that most artists went through going there and how um, scary it was and you were pulled out of your comfort zone and you were struggling and f failing and succeeding and it's this just meat grinder the first couple of years you're working professionally because it's like it's hard you know very very hard work it's confusing you're overwhelmed by the amount of things that you have to do i also had this as a sample page uh this was nuts and <coughs> trevor's inks were so good on it so i've recommended this to people that are trying to learn to ink is is and you if you've followed my videos for a while you've heard me say this don't be one of those people that won't do a test page more than once it's like people have this like short attention span i i on hard pieces, I would sometimes do the test page three times. And believe it or not, although you should believe it, every time I did it, it was better. That's well, the whole point of, of doing stuff. The repetition makes you better. The familiarity of it will make it better. And the areas that you didn't do as well as you would have liked to, you get a second opportunity to do it. And in fact, I think there's a couple of Gen 13 samples that I did I may have done them five times not not a lot but i think that there was one or two where there was just it was um it was there was a spiral binder multiple spiral binders and i was having trouble with the perspective on them and then also it was a, a like an office chair that had like wheels like like wheels and like one of those bases on it and uh, i wasn't great with um doing that kind of stuff i didn't know i didn't understand perspective that was part of it <laughs> It's like you can use all the temples and the world templates in the world, but if you don't really understand what you, where the vanishing points are and how the ellipse really should sit, um, you're gonna have problems. So definitely, um, it always helps to be able to draw if you're inking. The more that you learn on the side with that, the, the better off you'll be, because you don't really know that you're making the mistakes. That's the thing is you can't see it. You know the experience um, builds it up. So we're gonna go a little bit fast through some of these pieces just because I've got three issues open. There is a fourth issue um, and uh, you'll notice one thing is is Aaron refines his stuff a lot as he moves along. So there, the second issue has a little bit more detail, a little less detail, excuse me, than the first issue. And then the third issue, he's boiling it down even more. Um, to me, this is like, uh, I mean, style-wise, you'll see even the styles start to shift. He's getting different influence stuff. This is such a great sequence. We're going through this warehouse, and it's just... Oh, my God. So good. And this is probably one of my favorite comics of all time. I don't revisit a lot, but this, this one has a lot of memories for me. This is great. The coloring is awesome on this. Man, so good. This is all very very cool. This was great too. This 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 and this and then this. The the motion on those three panels is so exciting to look at, and in particular in black and white. Well, this whole sequence actually is great. It's like click 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 click. I mean, he's really really moving your eye through this fast. This beautiful motion here flings you this way, and then if he even follows through with the door kick. I mean, it's just such advanced thinking, but you know. A few years at our art college, learning under Neil Adams, and then coming to Wildstorm and being around people like Richard Bennett and you know Jim Lee and stuff like that, it all benefited these guys. I now the one thing I will say is I never ever saw Aaron work at the studio. He worked at home and would come to the studio and visit, 
but I never ever once saw Aaron draw at the studio. So the idea that we were all like tutoring each other and that, you know, someone was over your shoulder going, no, draw like, like this isn't really accurate. Um, you know, you could seek that out, but, but, uh, not all the artists worked at the studio at the same time. I've said a million times that there were, there were people there that, that like, I literally saw Scott Clark one time and I was at the studio for 16 years. Obviously he wasn't there that whole period, but I mean, you know, I don't know Sal Regla. I do know Trevor Scott, but, um, yeah, so it's, it's, um, just depend on what, what hours you were keeping and then, um, what years you were there. I came in in 95, so that would have been right around, um, Aaron was working on issue three of Team 7. This stuff is all great. These guns are so wild. I remember... Aaron showing me, um, he was a big fan of Walter Simonson and Barry Windsor Smith were, were two artists that he was pretty into. And I think he got into Zafino. I'm pretty sure he was one of the people that told me about Zafino. I mean, I do, I do see some Neil Adams. This is great, too. Yeah, these colors aren't bad, man. These are these are pretty pretty good reproductions of this. You can see a little bit of pixelization in here. That could be zipatone. Yeah, it is zip. Uh, but the background is even getting a little bit of this kind of moray thing going on. This was so awesome. Oh my god, I love that Frank Vim Frank Miller vibes, dude. He's so good. This is a strong start for a comic artist. He did he did one or two books. He did I think he did one issue of something for Marvel, like an uh, maybe an X Men annual short story. I think he did two things at continuity. It's a very small amount of books, but you know you figure that could be seventy five to a hundred pages of art. So that'll definitely get you going. Um, you know, in terms of heading the right direction. And spending a year on this, he was able to probably work out a lot of kinks. There might have been a lot of attempts at things that failed. Like a panel like this, who knows how many times he tried to draw it, you know. I think Travis on the Wildcat special spent about a year on it, too. So you can already see Wave 1, Jim Lee, Wills, Brett Booth, J. Scott Campbell... They were working at a quicker pace. The second wave, which would be the talent search people, although Campbell kind of falls into that category, um, they started to slow down. You know, the 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 time between 1993 and 1995, uh, a lot of artists um, that came to Wildstorm really weren't working at a quick pace. Richard Bennett, you know, put a ton of detail on his stuff, so he was a little slower. When I got there, they wouldn't let us work slow. We had to produce. So it was a completely different environment and structure for us. I mean, they basically sat us down and said, you're not working slow. <laughs> what they did, you're not doing that. We need more books out. So it was terrifying. But uh, I explained that, that in a way for, for like I could use Lee Bermejo as an example because he, he came in a little tiny bit after me. Um, the desire to want to get good, but then to also have to produce at a pretty good clip actually did strengthen us. So, you know, it didn't work that way for every, everyone. Some people that went through that process, um, you know, struggled with it. And we did too, but what I'm saying is if you stuck to it, this is very... Michael Turner had a shot like this in um, Ballistic, number one. And in fact, you know, what's funny is I always thought there's a sequence in Witchblade where a car windshield breaks... And Aaron Weisenfeld had done a really, really good car windshield break in a Death Blow black and white story for Wildstorm Spotlight. So I'm thinking that Michael Turner might have been a fan of Aaron's. It makes sense. But yeah, I think Ballistic number one, there's a shot that's kind of similar to that. I mean, that could be coincidental. But then, like I said, I had seen that window, window shield break. And it's like, man, it kind of reminds me of Aaron. This is so crazy, too this stuff he drew all these in the um panels too sometimes with stuff like this uh, if you see the original art these will all be blank and maybe if there was a scene that that was on another page they'll pop in there um you know you'd be like stat 
the page one panel two. Sorry, it's a little blown out there, but you get the idea. But uh, you know, this is cool, Picard. It was funny as I was. Um, I'm friends with Quan Chang, and he represents Joe Matarera, and um, <laughs> the difference of like trying to do stuff now and and back like it was x-men some x-men pages that he was going to sell for joe but on one of them a character was wearing a weezer shirt and he he put a note for the, for the letterer like don't cover up the, the weezer shirt i don't think now you could do that i don't think you could have a t-shirt with a band name in in like a dc or marvel comic and and i guess unless they owned the light you know like the label was on that this is great it's interesting seeing some of these pieces in color because I'm, I'm used to seeing them in black and white or pencil and haven't seen the, the finished book in a long time. I always thought this was amazing. That's hard to do. It's hard to control your lines and have the fade like that. Um, your lines start to get thicker as they go up here, but they also start to get closer together. I've shown that technique in multiple inking videos, but yeah, it's like you go from thin to thicker but also the thickers get closer together like that and then you put the other lines you know through it but the, kind of the same idea is they get thicker they're actually getting a little tighter so i'm trying to this is a pencil tool but anyway but that's how you get those fades but the problem is is you don't want to have lines that are unequally spaced you know what i mean because then all of a sudden it creates these weird little gaps that might not look cool or if you get thick too soon if all of a sudden you've got black here and you've got a, this much more to go you can create a weird um dark spot so proceed with caution my friends proceed with caution all right let me go past this page fast we got all kinds of good stuff to look at yeah, another page. Man, I haven't seen this in color, and geez, I don't even know how long. I'm so used to seeing this in black and white. Look at the anatomy here; it's crazy. It's like you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty on point, but very, very defined. <laughs> it's funny. I I um was looking at some McFarlane Hulk stuff yesterday that I hadn't seen ever, really, to be honest. Uh, it was pretty interesting. This is a great sequence, too. This is very Otomo. That was another... I think Aaron, to me, seemed like he had a little bit of, like, Otomo in his his soul. But this is really, really a cool sequence. They, like, test this, like, device, and it just kills all the people. And then you see, like, blood and stuff like that. Like, they start fighting. It's really nuts. Some sort of chemical bomb or something like that. Messes them up. Turns them into the evildoers. This was crazy too. This roof. Oh my god! I remember seeing this. Like this. So good. It's like, oh man, it's a freaking bloodbath in there. But this, this is crazy. Aaron penciled all those lines too. He was nuts. Right now, I can't really do lines on faces. It doesn't look like my style. I was, I did a follow up to um, the Grifter video. I haven't uploaded it yet, but I was talking about that. That um, Mel had some faces like this with like lots of lines, and I've I've tried it like in my sketches, like my pencil like pencils, um, and it just doesn't look like my stuff, or it doesn't feel like twenty twenty one art. It, it it just isn't clicking for me. So I've been kind of avoiding rendering on faces right now, to be honest, on um, the Crystal Planet stuff, just because uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't it doesn't look like like what I want. So could be the story though i think in in my mind i've created sort of what i think the story should look like for you know the content and so it's it's i don't know if super rendered faces is <laughs> the aesthetic it might scare people <laughs> this is really nice things so i think after <clears throat> issue one because again it took like a year to do uh we're gonna get into jd and scott williams inks on air which is quite nice too this is really cool five panels the bodies the bodies oh my god well hopefully everyone had a good week i was i was busy i'm on a great schedule right now i'm i'm able to pencil and ink five pages every eight days so that's a fast clip um 
and uh, I'm determined to finish Crystal Planet as fast as possible so I can get back on Blaster Kid. So just be patient. I'm I'm going to get Crystal Planet completely done. Um, and uh, I'm doing it as quickly and as nicely as I can. So I'm, I've got a really, really good schedule in place in terms of like a workflow schedule, not, not a, a dream schedule. I'm talking, I've done it. I did it last week and I was on it. Uh, his explosions are so good too. This, is this from issue one? You can already see in a way he's, he's starting to simplify the stuff a little bit. What ends up happening is, you know, you might go into comics, you know, with a real detailed style, but, but ultimately in the back of your mind, you're going, okay, I need to do five issues, uh, at, 24 pages per book so i'm gonna need to do about 125 pages give or take say with covers and stuff like that that's 130 pieces you're gonna do a couple of pinups too if it's taking you five days a page i mean you're looking at literally 650 days <laughs> to get five five issues done and a few covers and pinups and you start to have to figure out how to draw something that you like and do it quicker and it can expose your stuff, weaknesses in your stuff initially. Details, details not hard to do, and it covers up a lot of things. He draws very well. This is very Mignola too. That's another um, definite influence on, on Aaron. But, but you saw this with Travis too. So Travis Wildcat special took him a year. This book took Aaron a year, and you can already see Travis and Aaron both started to gravitate towards Mignola. Travis did it on Wildcat sixteen he completely changed his style from 15 because you just realize you're like i can't get stuff done and do this on any kind of schedule that's gonna that will work for me now that doesn't mean you can't come back to that real detailed style later because he did it he did it on wildcats golden age he did it on uh wildcats volume two Aaron did the same thing. He did a book with Richard Bennett, the Wolverine Deathblow book, and other stuff that he did that that he just went like, I don't want to be a fast guy. I like spending more time on my stuff. But he has the experience of both. But this is, you know, you can see he's starting to simplify the stuff. But not, in, it, but it doesn't look good. These don't, these aren't really great simplified faces. In fact, it it almost doesn't look like Aaron to me. But it, I'm sure it is. But yeah this got weird but the thing is, is you draw a few pages like this and it doesn't look like your stuff anymore um you start to work it out you f you go man I, I can't stand this what did i do wrong and you figure it out from there so it's interesting seeing this stuff because again you these guys at this point had not done enough books to really fully have their shit down this is really great. Aaron was always excellent with perspective. And in fact, he was he was definitely, besides McFarlane, one of the artists that, that I could see how well he used it. Um, you know, this is this is kind of a difficult shot. He's got, I mean, it's basically a three-point perspective shot. Um, and, uh, you know, he's got ellipses and stuff like this. You'll see him flex. There's a, a sequence in an issue coming up where a guy puts a gun together in the air like the parts and it's just you go oh man he can draw here we go so this this again it's got a little bit of an Atomo vibe to me on this not not this but but uh some of this other stuff really really good god he's so great what's interesting at this time too is is richard bennett and and aaron um got me into uh jeff darrow you know the um Oh, shoot, I'm spacing all the book. Hardboiled. And uh, Tomo Memories. Oh, this is so good. Oh, my God. I love this page. Yeah, this is this is interesting. This has got, like, a little bit of, like, a Zafino meets, like, Michael Golden vibe to me. Oh, my God. It's so good. I don't know how many people know the Chris Warner Team Seven books, but those were pretty good too. Uh, heavy, more heavy-handed style, but but really really nice. I always like this page, but again, you can see it's it's more simple. But again, he's flexing perspective. He's showing you this just beautiful, you know, grid of stuff all laid out on it. It's really really nicely done. 
good, good stuff. And instead of drawing the helicopter, you get a silhouette of a helicopter. Done and done. <laughs> oh yeah, this is pretty brutal. But again, even this, the line quality is just very, very different. There's not the extra hatches as much, do you see? There's single line hatches more. Right there, you've saved 50% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny though they, a lot of these are single hatches there's a little bit of, of him showing the curvature of the form but yeah I mean the double and triple hatches are gone <clears throat> it was interesting too as I noticed um, I looked at the first three issues of Grifter with Mel Ruby and I had said in I think the first issue that I was under the impression thinking back on that time that Mel had actually spent more than a month on the first issue and when you see issue three you see what a monthly book looks like from him and it's very very different um it doesn't even look like the same penciler in fact I forgot about that but you could see the pressure of the deadlines getting to him because the first issue is really good the second issue is strong and starts to kind of get a little sketchy towards the end of the second issue and the third issue like i said it, it nearly doesn't look like his stuff at times there's there are some nice pieces but um yeah the weight of the deadlines was getting to both of us i'm sure this is really nice this almost looks like it was traced from a photo but it might not have been but uh i don't know this it feels a little like photographed but maybe not it doesn't he could clearly draw all this stuff this is great This is really good too but that's you know having you know what i would say that maybe he did, i don't think it was from a photo to be honest actually now I'm thinking of it because i'm thinking of some other stuff that he draws coming up oh yeah this is really good i always love this this exterior shot of the building looking in with the black bricks checkerboard floor too Whew. This would take a while to ink. This panel right here, just to fill in the blacks, man. That's a lot of work. A lot of work. But that's why Scott Williams and JD both had assistants. So JD was Scott's assistant. And then when JD started working on his own, they would use uh, John Ty, I think. And then also a friend of mine, Peter. The Guzman. I wonder, Peter, you out there? Let me know. <laughs> I saw him at Comic Con a few years ago. He, uh, he, I think he did follow my YouTube channel. This is really good. I, I always like the way that he drew that kind of anatomy. It's really beefy and bulky and kind of square. It looks, it looks kind of cool. These are nice too, man. These faces are crazy. He does this. The these these side heads are very trippy. It's like there's not a lot of cranium and it's very like. That's a weird shape. I would be like, uh, give it a little more back cranium, a little more forehead. Um, it's almost like it's not at the right angle completely. He's he's showing you almost two drawings at once because it's part. It's kind of a side view, but it's also kind of a back view. It's like an optical illusion. Parts of this are a side view, like this is a side view, but it's not really the angle that the head is at. The head is at a different angle. The head is more at this angle. But yeah, it's a little tricky, but yeah, the stuff should be foreshortened more. And also based on the tilt of the head, um, it's a little off, not a big deal. Could do it better than I could. Ah, oh, this is cool. Again, a Tomo, a little like a Tomo Frank Miller vibes there. So good. Aaron drew pretty good clothes too. Like like uh, this is a pretty simple. This is kind of like how I draw clothes right now. <laughs> um, but but uh, some of the military gear and stuff that he did is really really great. And this this has a little of like a Wolf's vibe to me. The heavy shadows really stylish and i'm sure scott williams in some ways kind of um amplified that too you know because it's it's this looks like scott williams inks to me 
that's really good. This is cool. It's trip like again, it's very Aaron structure. So interesting. This is all cool. Man, that's so nice. I really I would love to see Aaron again in person. I just feel like he's busy, I don't want to bug him, but at some point, maybe next year I'll try to hook up with him. It was impressive. He's got a like a painting studio and I went and visited him and man he does these huge like oil paintings and charcoal drawings. Oh they're crazy. This is great. This looks like downtown San Diego, even though it's not supposed to be, I don't think, but it's a very small building. In terms of width, I that's a little weird. Like that's like two bedrooms width of <laughs> A building i guess it could be much deeper but it's kind of weird it's like it's like an office and then two little tiny rooms and that's it, it seems quite narrow i don't know this is nice i do a lot of shadows and stuff like that this is cool i like i love actually wills does this kind of thing uh and, and uh jay lee would do it too um you get the um like the hallway pages where it's like you know what I mean? Like, you'll have people kind of walking, and so they're up like this here, and then by the time they get down here, you're actually seeing them kind of like at a different angle, and then you put those crazy wolves panel borders on it, you know? You got like a pretty exciting shot. Let's get like a throne room or something with like crazy, you know, monster faces or something like this, and this could all be like brick wall or something. That's how fast I draw my layouts. I'm not even kidding. And I tighten up the pencils for about three hours, and I'm inking from that. It's crazy. It's so scary. <laughs> I always knew I would be a fast artist, but I was terrified to like go for it. But now I don't. I'm not giving myself a choice. It's running gun time until uh, I get on Blaster Kid. <laughs> then I'll slow down. It was funny as I talked about this before. So, so when I finished the Blaster Kid script, I had been watching a guy's YouTube channel who he ended up pulling his channel down, but he was a pretty big like game reviewer, um, and uh, I he had done this series of videos on like Metal Gear Solid, and he just deconstructed the script so good. It was so interesting, and um, oh Jeff Rebner and Chuck Gibson. This is funny. Oh, how funny! This is gonna be really weird. Um, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this piece. Oh, it's so dark. Bummer. Oh, it's so funny. Jeff would use very big, chunky, like, lines. It was, like, really beefy, beefy art. It's funny. But, um, but yeah, so, so I sent him the script, and he read it, and he said, he said, you should do a practice pancake. And what he meant was, uh, you should do a book, um, that you can just experiment with and crash and burn and just try anything and and get that experience of going through a whole like mini series um and crystal planet ended up being that so it was like better than taking an inking job because i was i was offered aquaman which would have been a 10 month gig and i didn't want to do it and so when crystal planet was offered to me i went for that but i you know i had to have work for a little bit longer so it was a it was a tough decision to make but uh yeah, so that's kind of my practice pancake. But it's funny is I'm going to reach out to that guy and tell him that I actually ended up doing it because I haven't kept in touch with him. But it's very nice of him. It was really helpful. But, yeah, it's a shame he pulled down his YouTube channel because it was really good. But I don't know. He's a perfectionist or something. I'm not sure what it is. If you like that kind of thing, though, there's a guy named Stake Bentley that did um, some really good videos on, uh, like, Metal Gear Solid and the whole uh, s like the secrets and stories and rumors and all that it's pretty interesting stuff so this was the perspective thing that I was talking about where he takes all these random gun parts and then slowly puts the gun together in front of his face such a cool cool sequence and then he's got the gun done and if you know the character this is actually Grunge's dad I'm pretty sure this is Percival Chang who would be what is going on outside um but yeah that's grunge's dad so all these guys have connections to the wildstorm universe 
Sorry if you can hear the horn honking. Um, this is very Otomo, and I loved how he started drawing hands. That's very Mignola, and in fact, it looks like Mignola. Mignola did a Hellblazer, um, Hellraiser story. It's a short story in issue 13, I think, of the Hellraiser comic. It's really good, but um, there's a guy that goes to his apartment, and, I, and there's some hands like that, like hands with keys, but that's a very Mignola hand. This is very Otomo. This is good stuff. And then that is so creepy and disturbing. That, that almost has a little bit of a Ronin vibe to me. Some of the detail and stuff like that. Aaron had great influences. He was one of my favorite artists easily for the first five years that I was at Wildstorm. Always would say Aaron if someone would ask me who my favorite artists were. This is good. This is so Aaron. It's kind of the, it's a little bit of like the Barry Windsor Smith aesthetic with just a little less lines on it. This is nice. Really, really good pants. And jacket looks good. Damn. It's a very, very cool pose, too. I like the way that this stuff is scanned. Honestly, like, however they reproduce this. This is what I was talking about, though, with the moray. Do you see in his hair? This is a little weird. Nice. I was seeing it on a few of the pages. This is Zipatone, but... There could have been a light zip on that, and maybe that's what happened, but I don't remember a zip tone on this guy's face like that. Anyway, we'll get to that in a second. We're going to be in issue three. This is a nice spread, but again, it's it's much more sim simple, but it's very, very detailed too. But man, this is kind of the Michael Golden thing where it's like this leaves you no room for mistakes. It's so clear. That, I mean, you know, if these bullets are drawn weird, they're going to look kind of noticeable. Or if the hand grenades aren't in perspective and stuff like that. But, boy, this is nice. He's got the pat. He's going over this shape. We're seeing the top planes of this stuff. You know, he really gets it. Eye level is, like, right about here. It kind of floats actually, but it's all right. These guns are great too, man. And this was back in the day when you would have to eat, eat, like either fake your guns or you were probably pulling up magazines. And then people started to get into the toys a little bit, like Ultimate Soldier, Universal Soldier. They had pretty good accessories, like fairly accurate looking gun toys. This is cool. Man, the stuff is still very, very detailed. <laughs> Issue three, he, he mellows it out. But you can kind of pace it, too. I mean, that is one option, is uh, do the thing where um, some pages are detailed, some some you kind of, like, do more silhouettes and whatnot. So I got to get hustling, though. I should have had this video done at 11. Kind of going over. I love this. The stair sequence is great. Man, this is so good. Lots of people that I know, this is some of their favorite comic work. I know Lee Bermejo loved this stuff too. How could you not? This is such a cool room. God dang. How he do it and make it look so good. Oh, this is really interesting colors. Damn. Oh. So fun. Oh, yeah. He's like mind bending him into this, controlling his brain. Bam. Oh yeah, this is cool. I'm this face in black and white was so much more realistic than anything else on the um on the page. I don't know if you. Eh, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was like there was just the way the the lighting was on it made it really look cool. All right, I'm going to hustle. Oh, yeah, look at this cover. This is so cool. And this is Aaron all on his own. So this was inked by J.D. and Scott Williams. With J.D.'s name being on top, it would mean that J.D. probably inked more pages. This is one of my favorite issues, though, actually. This is great. I think, yeah, I was going to say he. it says loyalties up here. I think that's what it says. 
yeah, loyalties, yeah, and bullet holes. A little hard to read in the color. This was so good, too. Damn. Damn, you air wide and foul. Just so good. Oh, yeah. This is good. A little more graphic. Again, it reminds me a little tiny bit more of the Chris Warner stuff at times. Really, really bold shapes on that, too. Boy works though it looks pretty cool and again you can see there's more a little bit more rendering um to blend this in the solid blacks probably weren't working for him as well as he hoped or was looking weird so do you see that there's more rendering going into it he's putting in those real bold shapes but he's just um having them um having that extra value with the cross hatching to help it help it blend from white to gray to black this is really good man it's a great lynch Nailed it. All right. Oh, I was like this. I was like this a lot, actually. Really fun page. And this is very Wills. I talked about this before. Wills is great at these kind of types of panels. So this is really good. This will look great in black and white, too. Trying to see it. But yeah, really, really nice panel a truck damn that's crazy that's a little truck he drew it so good that's cra that is really nuts to be honest man that's really good this is great too this is why 3d models are boring when these guys draw this stuff it just looks so much more fun Use those for previs, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you need to see how a shot's gonna look, use the 3D model, but if you can help it, try to draw draw the stuff. Really, really will make a big difference and add, like, more personality to the, um, the thing. It's my recommendation. Because artists have been using reference forever, we know that, but, um, let's something happened here. We might have to go out of order for the end of this. Won't won't be that big of a deal, but just. Uh... Okay. Oh yeah, this is great. That's really really cool. I have to do a lot of fade in fade outs, but they're not on a screen. But that might be a fun way to um, play with the lines a little bit. God, that's so good. His hands too, man, they're so powerful. Imagine being like 23 years old and being able to draw like this. It's really crazy. I, I talk about how talented and accomplished these guys were. This is hard work that gets you to these points. That's very Mignola too. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, these guys wanted it bad and really, really put in the work. so weird seeing these in color i haven't seen this stuff in color in so long this doesn't even look like the same page to me in color again you can see that moray pattern thing kind of happening all in all though i give dc credit for re one republishing this for for digital format and two um overall it actually looks excellent I mean, this is higher quality, really, than the, the original printed comics. I and mean, the original printed comics are obviously super badass, but this is solid. The paper that they used on the trade paperback is actually a little tiny bit better. Um, some of the issues in the original comics were a little muddy. The first issue was a little dark, but yeah, they used a slicker, kind of glossier paper on the trade, and it seemed to let the art breathe a little bit more. It's not super glossy. Oh, okay, this is the spread I was thinking of. This is awesome. Oh my god. Look at that. This is like if Mignola and Jeff Darrow had a baby or something, right? Like, it's like it's got the Mignola vibe, but it's just more detailed 
or Mignola and Aaron had a vibe. I always thought this was really weird. I didn't fully get, I don't know, do they pray to like the insect, the ants or something? It's been a long time since I read it, but I was, I, that was the only thing that threw me off on this piece was, why is there an ant statue? It's really, really cool though. It would have been interesting to see Aaron collaborate with someone like Jodorowsky. He could have done something really interesting. He seems to be dipping his toe a little bit back into comics. He's doing a thing that's like a sequential story. He's posted like one or two panels from it. Um, so who knows? They're kind of this shape, I think, like this upper panel. But um, they're they're fairly detailed little pen and ink pieces. But uh, it would be fun to see if Aaron did, you know, sixty to a hundred of those and turned it into like actual comic book. So I don't know. It seems like his passion and interest has been rekindled. It's like nostalgia, you know, or it's something that he loved when he was younger, and then got into fine art and you know enjoys that now. But uh, you know those sort of childhood passions, it always takes you back to like that happy place. So. He may want to get back to his happy place. <laughs> These Jeeps are great. Man, he's so good. Yeah, he drew all this stuff. I don't I mean he may have used reference, but gosh, it's so damn good. Oh boy. Oh, this pinup is really cool. Oh, not gonna let me turn it. Are you? This was sort of his new style. Um, again, I apologize. I can't rotate it right now because my computer is taxed on RAM. But um, this is, I think, Garner Inks. Yeah, this is Alex Garner Inks. Um, yeah, Aaron, right when he finished Team 7, really kind of cleaned up his style. He did a medieval Spawn Witchblade pinup in one of the issues of that. And it's really, really good. But it's this kind of new style. It was very accurate. Um with no nonsense like it was still detailed but like you could see he wasn't really putting any what he, what he considered extraneous lines it seemed to all have a purpose but he was maturing you know as an artist these profiles are so crazy even that, that upshot oh this is cool i love this i mean dude he drew like the best crushed building ever <laughs> so good and the stairs and just the whole thing oh my god it's so cool Aaron, you're a good good artist oh this was one of the test pages that i did i inked this thing at least three times possibly four or five it was hard somewhat loose pencils but it was all there and just this face in particular was so challenging now these aren't my inks here to be clear but um yeah, I inked, I inked this page multiple times. In fact, I wonder if I still have them. I don't remember ever selling them. If I ever come across them, I'll show them. They're, I have a tub full of like my earliest, earliest samples and stuff like that. I did start to sell them, though, like in the early 2000s, but I don't remember selling the Aaron ones. I got rid of all the J. Scott Campbell or most of them. I think I have one partial J. Scott Campbell one left, but um, yeah, it, just, it was like... I just had too much. This is weird too. I remember that head. His head is such a weird shape. Still, it it all works though. Like like his aesthetic is pretty consistent, and it's partially because he draws the stuff mainly out of his head. So it's like the weird things that he does seem to stay in the stuff. But yeah, this guy almost looks like he's ready to morph into like a monster or something. Like like his head's about to explode or something. It's very weird. But, you know. Oh yeah, this. I love this too. God, such a great drawing. Oh my god. The Almond Brothers. It's so funny. Oh, Aaron, you're so, so good. But yeah, so this should get you excited. You should definitely, definitely check out issue four. Read the comic. It's actually a very, very cool story written by Chuck Dixon, who's a great writer and um, beautifully inked by Scott Williams, JD, and Trevor Scott. We got a little nod to Frank and Mike, two of Aaron's 
influences. And then let's see this last page. America. <laughs> All right. This is definitely from a photo. Um, uh, you guys have a great day. Have a super fun Sunday. I will be back this week with... Um, I was gonna sell a bunch of art and books from my collection on ebay and ebay started to change all their policies and they're charging more to end auctions and i went you know what screw ebay i'm gonna sell it directly to people and i'm gonna give them the discount of what ebay would normally charge so you'll get my prices on top of the fact that it, i'm gonna knock it down more based on you know, my normal anticipated fees on ebay but i just refuse to pay them they're just they're ripping off sellers now um, so anyway, but yeah, look forward to that. At least one day a week, I'm going to be doing an art spotlight and all the art will be available to purchase. And then another day I'll go through books and, um, most of them are sealed brand new. It's stuff that I worked on. Uh, I'm going to be selling a bunch of prints that I have here that I don't want anymore. It'll be fun and, uh, something different to look at and, you know, all of it I can get to you if you're interested in picking it up. So their loss, your gain. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.